We went round the UK studios and the first one we came to was E1 and it just so happened that the, the head of the studio at the time, Alex Hamilton, was just the biggest Laurel and Hardy fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we arrived at the, uh, at the building, they had already put all these f like mocked up Laurel and Hardy posters all over their windows and we walked into a reception, they were playing old Laurel and Hardy movies on their TVs and then when we went into the conference room, they had bowler hats full of popcorn and stuff. And, and literally, it was the easiest pitch I'd ever done, you know? <laughs> John, I was going to ask you about gaining 200 pounds. Normally when you play a character, uh, the, one of the first times you start to make decisions or at least discuss some of the different parts of a character is when you engage about the costumes. But we couldn't engage about the costumes on this movie until we figured out the body of this person. And I thought about like, what did he look like? Of course there's no naked pictures of him, but... <laughs> Thank the but, Lord. <laughs> yeah, but his nickname was Babe because he looked like a chubby baby from the time he was a chubby baby to the time he was a grown man. And I started looking at pictures of chubby babies online and started sending chubby babies to Mark Coulier, the, ma the makeup designer and the costume people. And I was like, this is it. This is the shape of his body because it actually was. Once that exterior part was done, and that was all done before we started shooting, then my work really began. The tough stuff really is trying to find out who they were and there's a lot of information out there we, we had access to but really there's there's also a blank page which is down to Jeff's writing in some respects because Je Jeff has this this conjecture about what happened in this period of lives that we don't know about that's where the educated guesswork came in for John and I how's your knee it hurts it's even pushing you a little too hard babe no I loved us you loved Laurel and Hardy but you never loved me The war really made a big dent in their career in a way because, you know, after the war, people's attitudes had changed. They'd seen some really, you know, terrible things. And these two clowns who were so loved before that time felt like yesterday's men a bit, you know. Laurel and Hardy's DNA still runs right through comedy. And if you ask any comedian these days, Laurel and Hardy will always be in the top three of most comedians, right? Yeah, I mean... I think anyone with good taste loves Laurel and Hardy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hold this. Do we really need that trunk? People ask me, do you remember when you became aware of Laurel and Hardy? And I think I've been aware of Laurel and Hardy as long as I've been aware. Yeah. <laughs> It's almost like from the moment I saw them, they were like salt and pepper or light and shadow, Stan and Ollie. They're people that I've thought about a lot, but that said, I was really shocked to learn some of the, the details of their life behind the scenes. Like when I was a kid, I used to think when they did their movies, then they would go home together and they'd cook dinner yeah, together yeah. and then they'd go to sleep <laughs> together. Like, mm. you know, that's how powerful that partnership was and how powerful that chemistry was. We had a four week rehearsal period um, it was sort of three and a half weeks um, and we rehearsed the dance routines and the, the sketches and it worked in a number of ways. One, it allowed John and I to get to know each other. The other thing was uh, we got to experience what Stan and Ollie would have experienced when they rehearsed because they would have had to rehearse these dance numbers. They would have had to re rehearse these routines themselves. So it was a, a little um, a bit of research in, in that respect. The first draft that we had of the script, there was nine pages of dialogue in the, uh, in the dressing room. But what we really wanted to do was we wanted to be quite elaborate at the beginning of the film and, and, and quite bombastic in terms of our shooting style because at that point in their lives, they were at the top of the game and we wanted to mirror that in photographic style and, and hence why we put so much resources into this huge elaborate one take. We only had one day to shoot that because Star Wars was in Pinewood at the same time and they had every stage. We were relying on it being sunny because it had to be California and we were in London uh, in April which is notoriously a rainy time. And the day before we shot it, it rained. And the day after we shot it, it rained. And the day we shot it, it was beautiful sunshine, as you say in a thing. We made this movie in London, and we're bringing this movie right here to the heart 
of Hollywood where Stan and Ollie did walk around this place. Yeah. And they showed their movies here and yeah. they made their movies in this city. Yeah. It's really exciting to bring this movie full circle and to play some small part in keeping their legacy alive.